Hello and welcome to the Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Warwood. Crowds back at Belmont Park. It's free entry as well. We're expecting a showery day, unfortunately, though, 21 degrees Celsius. I'm expecting the track to possibly be a soft six given the rain forecast and the rail. It will be at the two metre position. Race number one at Belmont on Saturday will jump at 11.58. It's the free entry to Belmont Park Plate over 1,000 metres. And in replay, let's go back a fortnight to the win of Born to Rule. Now switching out around the heels of Born to Rule, a length and a half Astro Warrior continuance, looking for a bit of room back on the inside of those. Born to Rule hits the lead, though, coming to the 200 metre mark. About three quarters, bumper humper, new hat can't go on at the moment, followed by continuance. Born to Rule with 100 left to go, a length and a half in front, battling away bumper humper, continuance. But Born to Rule's too good. Born to Rule has won it by Good a race to start the card here. Plenty Plenty of debutants, so it is difficult to bet into. But I'm going to go with number three here, Born to Rule, at an each-way price, mainly because of the pedigree of this horse. It's by Universal Ruler, and we know how well the Universal Rulers go through the mud. And I do think that Born to Rule might be better suited than some of the other likes here, like Madame Torio and Billy Ain't Silly. Good, good contest, and goes on top. From number nine, Madame Torio was very fast out of the gates and ran a very good time in beating Snippalicious at Belmont on the 10th of June. That was on a good fall, though, on a softer track. I've got a few concerns about Madame Torio. Can certainly win without surprising, however. One of the debutants is number eight, Ginger Green, has the winkers on for the first start. Has had four trials and just the one recently, but it was a really good trial beating Shock Result, and Shock Result ran well at Belmont on Wednesday. And then number six, Billy Ain't Silly. Two trials, two wins. Jerry Noski has ridden both trials on a soft seven and a good four. Really did like the trial last start, uh, but uh, I did really was taken with Ginger Green's trial. So the debutants going with that horse. Top selection in race number one is number three, Born to Rule, to beat nine, Madame Torio, eight, Ginger Green, and six, Billy Ain't Silly. Race number two at uh, Belmont on Saturday will jump at 12.35. It's the Ascend Sales Trophies Handicap over 1,300 metres, and in replay, no surprise, we're going to take a look at Windstorm. Mad Wolf as well, bow count, and now Pike is starting to set the three-year-old after these leaders, Windstorm. He calls upon him now, and he hits the trigger. Double bubble in the meantime, shot to the lead. Now here comes Windstorm. It's Windstorm ranging up with 150 to go, dashing straight past double bubble, and Windstorm's going to come away and go on and win. Windstorm by more than a length. Nelson's flight has fought back. Windstorm is looking to make it back to victories in the Cerise and White. They've elected to put the Winkers on for the first time here to sharpen Windstorm up. He won in the replay race, beating Nelson's Flight, who he re-opposes here by a length and a quarter. The first start at Belmont was beaten by Indian Pacific, but that form has been franked, and the way that that race was run, it was mathematically impossible for Windstorm to win. I think that Windstorm went round at about $1.30 in the replay race. Would not be at all surprised if he starts shorter on Saturday. Goes on top from number two, Military Ruler, who's really good I fought first up off nearly a year uh, behind showmanship was only beaten a couple of lengths here backs up the seven days later Universal Ruler wet uh, track conditions and has won two out of six on soft tracks. Goes in for second. Number five is Nelson's Flight, who we saw in the replay race. Has won on soft tracks. In fact, has got a very good record on anything worse than good, but has got a little bit to make up on Windstorm. And even with the weight swing, I don't think it will be happening. And then number six, Fire Maker. Seven starts on soft tracks for two wins and two minor placings, with two lengths behind Windstorm in the replay race. Goes in the minors. Top selection in race number two is number eight, Windstorm to beat two military ruler, five Nelson's flight, and six fire maker. Race number three at Belmont on Saturday will jump at 115. It's the Tab Touch West Speed Platinum Handicap over 1400 metres and in replay. Let's have a look at the second up performance of Position of Power. Go wild, then position of power coming to the outside, and so's Nero Dio. Captain Kink, though, burst clear. 250 left to go. Captain Kink had shot over three in front. Position of power, Nero Dio are trying to run it down, but Captain Kink with 100 left to go still led more than two. Position of power, he's got them done, Captain Kink. Captain Kink all the way, and there's the claim gone for Jay. Position of power was second, second up in that replay race, was third, first up. So I'm expecting the progression here. Three, two and into first place 
has won on the, uh, on the track before and over the distance, has run well on soft tracks. The concern has to be the map here. I think if Position of Power gets a decent run in transit off what might be a fair tempo, I think it will be the one to beat. The danger clearly on the map is number two, Zephyr Queen. Now this horse won two starts ago, beating Beat the Bell, who's also in this race by three and a half lengths. Last start was beaten by Western Pride. That form has taken a little bit of a knock in the last seven days, but the map is very kind. Zephyr Queen has won on a soft track before. She is the clear danger. Number six is Beat the Bell, flew home to beat Fry's Gift last time out over the 1300 metres. Steps up to the 1400 metres. She probably wants a very genuine tempo. I don't think she's going to get it here. And then number four, Bruce Almighty comes out of the same race as Position of Power. Was half a length behind Position of Power in that race. Has drawn even stickier than Position of Power. Gate number 13, that will be the outside gate regardless of how many people go round. Top selection in race number three is number three. Position of Power to beat two Sever Queen, six beat the Bell and four Bruce Almighty. Race number four at Belmont on Saturday will jump at 1.55. It's the Glen Ride Chaff handicap for the three-year-olds over the 1,400 metres in replay. Let's have a look at the unlucky second last time out of Levitate. Pop the big question here on the outside now by Pike. Resort Man runs on down the middle, followed further back. Aberdeen Queen not doing enough, not nearly anywhere near enough as Indian Pacific still leads at the 200, a length in front of Levitate. He's really trying to knuckle down Indian Pacific, fighting under the urging of Parnham. Levitate's coming at him. Indian Pacific and Levitate, they went to it. There was nothing. Very good performance by Levitate in the replay race a fortnight ago. Went down by the narrowest of margins to Indian Pacific. Watching the race live, I thought that uh, William Pike had got the nod aboard Levitate, but uh, no matter what, high rating performance. Chloe has a party takes over here, claims one and a half. I think this horse has got the best form going around here and he's gonna be a decent price. Goes on top from your likely favorite, which is number five, Bright Diamond. Won two in a row and then was beaten by Mood Swings seven days ago. I'm not too sure there was that many excuses for Bright Diamond. Did have to go outwards about 400 metres from home to get a run, but I think was beaten fair and square, and the rating out of the race was nowhere near that of Levitate and Indian Pacific. I think might go around too short. Seven is a horse that's got a plenty of a potential. That's number uh, Puka Punyal for Lindsay Smith and Clint Johnston Porter. Comes out of the Bright Diamond race from the 10th of June, was only beaten half a length that day, expected to go very close to Bright Diamond again. And then number one, Massimo, jury out about this horse, goes back up to the 1400 metres, was a, a beaten favourite at $2 last week over the five furlongs. Top selection in race number four is number two, Levitate, to beat five Bright Diamond, seven Pukapunyal and one Massimo. Race number five at Belmont on Saturday is the main event. It will jump at 2.42. It's the Hahn Super Dry Strickland Stakes over 2,000 metres at Group 3 level. The replay race, it's the obvious replay race. It's the Hyperion Stakes won by Perfect Jewel. The fence, the Velvet King can get right up on his inside to join him. The stablemates have come away. Mississippi Delta runs on. So does Angelic Ruler down the outside. Abdicator, the Velvet King, closer towards the inside. Mississippi Delta, perfect jewel. Angelic Ruler both running on. The Velvet King kicks at the 100 now, tackled by perfect jewel. The Belmont Sprint winner, perfect jewel, goes to the Velvet King. They'll hit the line together, and she's done it again. Perfect Material jewel. Man won the three Belmont features two years ago. Perfect jewel has got the opportunity to become the first female horse to do it and I think there's no reason to bet against her. She was dominant in winning the Belmont Sprint. She was dominant in winning the Hyperion Stakes. She's proven on a soft track. She loves Belmont. She's three from three there. And uh, I don't think the trip's going to be a concern as well. She has won over 1,800 metres and placed over 2,100 at weight for age level. She goes on top. I think the obvious danger is the uh, Mississippi Delta with William Pike for Grant and Alana Williams. Was third behind Perfect Jewel, three and a bit lengths in the Hyperion Stakes. Looking at the section out of that race. I am expecting Mississippi Delta to improve, but needs to improve quite significantly, I think, to catch Perfect Jewel if Perfect Jewel doesn't throw in one of her bad performances. Then a bit of a gap to number two, Gatting. Now, he got too far back in the Hyperion stakes that we saw in replay. He did post the fastest last 200 metres 
of that race. He's won up obviously to 2,400 metres, being a derby winner. He's proven on a soft track, looking to see better from Gatting. And then number four, the Velvet King. False price in the market for mine. I think his best trip is 1,400 metres. He's been beaten over the 1,600 and the 1,400 metres of Belmont recently. He now tries 2,000 metres for the first time. He had a go at 1,800 metres in the Kingston Town Classic and was only plain. Top selection in race number five is number seven, Perfect Jewel. It's beat eight Mississippi Delta, two Gatting, and four the Velvet King.